going back to basics. In these next few videos, I'm going to be going back to basics with the tools. And the tools, as you know, we have the essentials, the creative, the portrait and the professional. So the next four videos are going to look at these and how just by using one of the tools panels and everything that contains that's contained within that panel can change your image. Today we're looking at a composite that I did in Photoshop a couple of years ago. And I just want to show you how it can just be using the essentials panel, how it can change the image. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Right, now that we're in Luminar, we're going to look at the essentials panels in this video and that's all we're going to look at. This image here, as you can see by it, is an AI structured PSD. I've already ran this image through Luminar 4. Uh, I'm now in Luminar 4.1, but I'm just going to show you what I used within the essentials panel only the essentials panel just to highlight this image and I'll talk you through some of the features as we go when we're doing this. So the first thing I am going to do is go into light. And you see when you're in an image, what you can do is you can choose white balance. I normally go for the grey card and the RGB values of that is 18% grey card. The RGB values of that is 124, 124, 124. Now I've scanned this image and I can't find it anywhere. But the image is all, has already a warmth applied to it uh, that I like for the final image. This was done, this image was done before I even had Luminar, so I was really happy with it. But once I get Luminar, I decided to send the image through Luminar and process it, and I now prefer the final effect. But for this video, I'm only going to deal with the essentials panel. So it's a little back to basics just to show you what everything does. So if I click the white balance and I move on to the screen, you can see pick a target neutral. Right, I can choose any one of these colours whatsoever. I've been through this entire image. Anywhere where I think there is a mid grey of those values. And sometimes you get close to it, but you won't get it perfect. But I'm just going to show you, I'm going to click somewhere around, say, there. Just to show you how tonally this will change the image. So do you see what happened there? More greens come through, which I didn't like within this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial it back to the beginning. So I'm going to click that and then it goes back here. So that's what the white balance does. It chooses what tonal value you're going to apply, a neutral tonal value that you are going to apply to everything. With this, the temperature as well, it's basically, that's the good thing about Luminar, it does what it says in the tin. So without labouring the point, I'm going to go in through this and just with slight adjustments to show you how I changed the image from what we have on screen, which originally was my final image, until I went into Luminar and what it is like now. So, so basically what we've done is if I change the colour balance there, you can see more blue coming through, more yellows coming through, and I quite liked where it was set here. The exposure as well, I can take it up, take it back down, but it ends up here being too muddy for me. Uh, and as again, this is just really the thought process in it. So the first thing I'm going to do just to adjust this image is apply some smart contrast to it. Not too much, but just enough to start to bring everything through. If I go here, you won't see much of a difference. But if you look at the hair here, you should see a subtle change. I like my subtleties in this. I'll dial that back. I'm then going to pull the highlights back just ever so slightly. So down to about there, which I'm happier with. The shadows I'm not going to adjust because as you notice when I shot this, if I pull the shadows down, that's a photographer's error not anything to do with the model. If I pull with the shadows down there, you begin to get a different shape in the face because of the shadows. Now that's my fault when I shot this. I wasn't paying enough attention. So I'm quite happy with that. In here I could get into the advanced settings and I could uh, bring the blacks or I could raise the blacks to 
crushed them slightly, I suppose, as they say. But I like the dynamic range in this, so I'm going to close that up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into AI Enhance. And in here I have AI Accent and AI Sky Enhancer. For this edit, what I'm going to do is push the sky, but not too much. You won't see much of a change there. The next thing is AI Structure. So this is a global edit yet again, but because it creates a mask, I can go in and edit this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to tweak that slightly, not too much. Just to around there, I'm happy with that. It's affected the skin though, very subtly. And as I said, I'm just going to look at the Essentials panel, so I'm not going to go into the Creative or the Portrait panels for this one. We'll do that in the next four videos. I'm going to edit the mask, and I am going to use a brush. I'm going to use the Erase option, and I'm going to take out the little effect that it's had on the skin. So to take the size down, and I am just going to paint in the skin area very very quickly for the purposes of this video each time I'm doing this what I'm looking for is any anomalies or anything that isn't pleasing to the eye because if you think about it nobody apart from editors I suppose nobody really cares how you got there it's the final image so this is where your fun comes in you know how much work and everything you can put into an image when I am editing any skin. We like the other features to be sharp, so I tend to leave the nostrils, the lips, the eyes and the eyebrows and any of the hair. Right, just to see what I've painted, I'll click the mask, just shows you the areas I've missed. I'll take them out now, and then that's me. So I'm quite happy with that. And you can see the mask here. That's the good thing about Luminar, it creates masks for you. Colour. Now, I could go in and remove the colour cast, and that's what happens. I like this colour, it helps with the full overall feel of the image. Advanced settings, I can go in and change and isolate any colours here. So I can pull the oranges right back or push them. But when I pull them right back, she looks quite ill. So I'm going to leave them there. I'm going to go in here and pull the saturation that back just, just ever so slightly, you won't notice it. The luminance, if I pull the luminance back, you shouldn't see too much of a difference except in the sky. Uh, you'll also notice it up here. So I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. So that's the colour within the Essentials panel. Next we can get into black and white conversion. That looks okay in black and white. So, but I'm not using it in here. Details Enhancer. This is when everything when you're looking at the image can push certain areas and pull back certain areas and again a mask is created every time you do this whereas in photoshop you have to create a mask with luminar the mask is automatically generated so i'm going to push the small details and i'm not going to get too far with these because if i flick it on and off i can see a slight difference around here. The rest of it I'm happy with, but within the face. So again, I'm going to go in and paint out here. It's still already set to erase. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger just for the sake of this. Right, so again, I'm going to just go in and deal with the skin. And I'll paint this quite liberally here. So that's as again, I've dealt with everything within the small details. Medium details, I need to show you what these affect. Do you see the contrast appearing? Right. For me and for my images, if you wanted quite a grungy image, use the details, push them to the extremes. But again, I only want subtle images and I don't really want to use medium details. So if you double click it, it resets back to zero. Large details. So if I push that, see I push everything here. This becomes too much. That's when you've went too far with your images. So I'm going to reset. I know it's a taste thing that's down to each individual, but the small details for me, that's a bit perfect there. The mask is still there, so I'm quite happy. Uh, Denoise, right, I'm going to zoom in just to show you how the denoise works. I'm going to go up to this area here, and hopefully you will see, there we go, hopefully you will see what's going on here. Right, so remember denoise is a global edit. 
Everything that you see here is global edits so they affect the entire image. So if you only want it to affect a small part of your image, use your mask to edit it. This I'm going to go globally just for the sake of this video, but I want to show you what it does. The luminosity denoise is looking for the brightness of the pixels and everything, and what it's going to do is, if I push that, and I'll push that right up to say 75. Let's go 75, so that's quite a bit. Look what's happened in the background here. If I zoom out, it's a global edit, so it softens everything throughout the image. Zoom into the eyes. They're soft, turn it off. Everything's popping back. Okay. I don't want it to affect as much as that. I just want it to. Go into the denoise panel. And if I push the denoise, you will see a slight change in here. And you see everything's became slightly softer. That The luminosity of it has become slightly softer. It's not just as contrasty. I'll then push the colour denoise, but I don't need to do that too much. You won't see much of a difference going on here. Even if I flick this back off, you won't see much of a difference. If you notice up in this area, mainly that's where you're going to see the difference. I put it back on. That's a subtle enough shift for me with the denoise. Landscape Enhancer, Dehaze. Again, a global edit. Watch the sky. And the entire image changes. That becomes too contrasty for me. But if I like the sky like that, which I didn't, but if I like the sky like that, I could go in, brush, and then I could go in and paint. In this case, take the brush bigger. I'm using the square brackets and the keyboard. This will now only be applied to the sky. Although that's a global edit, I have now went into edit mask and chosen paint. So it only applies to the areas I am painting. So if I go in there, you won't see much of a difference, to be honest. Uh, and I'll do it as again, I'll say I'll do this quite liberally. Right, so if I click the mask, everything in red is what I've just painted in of dehaze. If I do golden hour, it will only affect here, it won't affect the model watch. So that's now too vibrant for me. So we've pushed the golden hour to there. We don't want golden hour within this. So I'm going to pull that back, right? And I'm going to close this down. Last but not least, vignette. You can choose the subject. So for example, if I put a vignette in to around there, subtlety is the key with these images. I can go even further and do that. But as you see, that really darkens this down and takes it away from the autumnal look that it's meant to have. But just for this, and I'm going to choose subject, and I am going to make it that leaf. So did you notice that across here, it became darker. I'll reset it. I'll put it back to around there. Choose subject. I'm going to make it this leaf. Watch here. So you notice that get darker. So this here becomes the centre of the vignette. So it's, it's quite a good thing. It means you can choose whatever you want. I'm going to reset once again. And I'm just going to pull a vignette in based on this. So if I show you the before and after, even using just the essentials panel, there is a massive difference in my image. So that's the first of the panels and how just subtle changes can change an image. Hopefully that gave you a small insight into the tools themselves and in this case in the essentials panel and you can see what that consists of in the drop down menu that's created there but it just shows you what, how just by even using one of the tools menus that your image can change and in this case I prefer the subtleties so in this case it was just subtle edits to get me to the final conclusion of this image. As I say, this image was done two years ago in Photoshop and actually now that I bring it into Luminar, I prefer the end result from there. Whereas I really did like the Photoshop one. But Luminar has become essential for me within my workforce, so I really enjoy it. So the next few videos, the next one you see will be looking at the creative 
tools. Just be using one of the tools and everything that's contained within that panel, how that can change an image. So I'm going to do that for the next four videos just to let you see. And then the final video of that, we're going to go through everyone. So that's going to be a full edit. You've mentioned in the comments in past videos that you enjoyed seeing a complete edit from start to finish. So I have an image ready for that. Again, it'll be a landscape. I'm going to show you the full edit. Again, my thought process and what I'm thinking when I'm doing it. So if you've enjoyed this video, big thumbs up. If you'd like to check out some more videos in the channel below and consider subscribing, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thanks again for watching.